Hello and welcome to the next tutorial in Flash Animation which is going to focus on simulating real-world motion. We're going to start off by talking about animations inside animations and how can you do this in Adobe Flash CS 5.5. So we're going to start off by using the swimwear.fla file and we have got some symbols in our library here and one of the first things to note is that symbols in Flash contain their own timelines for animation in addition to the main timeline that is contained on the main stage. So if we drag the fish symbol into the library, we've got a fish image on our stage here, if we just drag that, those elements into our library we're going to create a movie clip symbol and we can call it fish and then as soon as we've created the symbol double click on the fish symbol to go inside it um, and we can see there that it has its, indeed got its own timeline. So we're going to select all of the elements we need each of these on separate layers so we can select them all and then if we right click and select distribute to layers from the drop down menu then Flash will automatically allocate each of these separate elements to a layer of its own. Next we're going to extend out the timeline to frame 15 so we can make sure that our animation takes place over a certain period of time and we're going to actually animate the fin and the tail of the fish. So first of all we're going to animate the fin and we need to actually move the registration point because we want it to pivot on the corner of the fin rather than on the center. So the registration point is that small circle in the middle of the uh, symbol. By switching to free transform you can just then click and drag the registration point where you want it to be which is on the pivot point of the fin uh, in this case. So just move it to the right of the object. Then create a motion tween on that layer and in frame 7 use the free transform tool to squash and stretch your fin a little bit so it looks like it's actually moving or flapping and then on frame 15 you want to put the fin back to the way it was in frame 1 so that you're going to get a smooth loop. So let's try and do the same technique on the tail. So if we select the tail layer and we're going to move the registration point to the pivot point and create a motion tween on this layer as well. Then we're going to free transform in frame 7 of the tail and squash and stretch it a little bit just to again make it look like it's flapping as the fish is swimming and then go to frame 15 and make the tail the same as it was in frame number 1. So you can do this manually or you can just open up your transform panel to make sure that it's numerically the same as it was in the original frame. And once you've got that set up, you can go back to your main stage and test the movie. And we can see the fish is not moving, but the fin and the tail are moving. So this demonstrates that um, the animation you, you put inside a movie clip symbol is independent of anything that happens on the main timeline in terms of animation. So you can embed animations inside symbols inside symbols, inside symbols, uh, to infinity. So next we're going to drag the fish into the library and create a new movie clip called Fish Animation. So now the original fish is inside another symbol called Fish Animation and we're going to move this symbol to the left of our screen. Double click on the symbol to go inside it and on the frame inside create a motion tween. In the last frame of the motion tween we're going to move the fish to the right of the screen. So what we're doing here is actually creating the motion of the fish inside another symbol which frees up our timeline on the main stage again. So we're embedding animations inside animations inside animations. Okay so when we test the movie we can see that the fish is swimming across the screen and then disappearing behind our image on the right there which is exactly what we want and then it loops back around to the start again. Okay if we're going to go back to the main timeline now and extend out the, the frames to frame 40 
and we're going to create a new layer and drag another instance of the fish from the library and make it bigger this time and we're going to drag another instance of the fish onto another layer and and so we'll have three fish on the stage all together and we're going to stagger each of those out by roughly 10 to 15 frames each so that the fishes appear at different times uh, as the animation goes on and in each case we want to make sure that the animation has enough time to play so we're going to extend out the timeline the main timeline to frame 100 just to give each of our animations enough time to play. If we test the movie we can now see that all three fish are swimming across the screen um, which is the effect we're looking for here. The next technique we're going to look at is how to animate along a path. So first of all go into the fish animation symbol and have a look at the motion path there. If we click on the green square in the layer beside the name of your layer, we can change the color of the actual motion path so that it becomes a little bit easier to see rather than that default green. We might choose blue, uh, bright blue to make it stand out a little. And then if we roll over the motion path and click and drag to curve the line down the page. That's how easy it is. Just hover the mouse over the motion path and your icon will change. The mouse cursor will change to a curved line icon and that will allow you to drag the motion path up or down or curve it whichever direction you would like. You can also use the sub selection tool, that's that white arrow second from the top, to adjust any of the individual points. So if we click on the sub selection tool and then click on a point in the motion path, we can click and drag it separately or independently of the other points. And we can also click on it, let go and adjust the bezier handles to increase or decrease the amount of curve associated with that point. Now we're going to create a new layer and we're going to use the pen tool to draw a, a wavy line with curves um, just to show you that you can actually transfer any drawing that you do with the path or the pen tool to your motion path. So let's just finish off this drawing shape here and then all we have to do is select the line and cut it out then we can delete the layer we don't need it anymore and go to the layer with your motion path on it and choose edit paste in place and that will replace the original motion path with your new pen drawing which your uh, object will follow that um, path as if it was a motion path and that's the animation. So we can edit this line with the sub selection tool as well to change any of the points in the path as we did before just by clicking the sub selection tool, clicking on a point and dragging or moving it around. We can also morph shapes um, if we're attempting to create various animated sequences. So if we create a new layer in our main timeline and call it jellyfish, and then we're going to open the fish parts folder and drag out the jellyfish symbol onto the stage. Double click on the jellyfish symbol to enter its timeline and double click once more again to edit the jellyfish symbol itself double click on one of the legs to enter its timeline so now we're now four layers deep and let's extend the timeline of the leg out to frame 40 which is how long we want the animation to be and insert a keyframe in frame 40 so now we've got a keyframe in frame 1, a keyframe in frame 40 both exactly the same so right click uh, uh, in between the two frames to turn it into a shape tween. So you, just a point about shape tweens, you can only use shape tweens on raw shapes or drawing objects in flash. You can't apply them to symbols for example. So next let's go to frame 20, halfway point between the start and end point of our animation and insert a keyframe there and use the sub selection tool to modify the leg. So if we click on any of the points in the leg in frame 20 
and we can actually modify that squash and stretch it make it look like it's bending upwards and if we get a little bit too complicated we can actually click on the leg with the ordinary selection tool and then click on the smooth icon at the bottom of the toolbar to simplify or smooth out the drawing and if we go back to scene one and move the jellyfish down to the bottom of the stage in frame 30 um, so that it's going to look like it it starts off screen at the bottom and floats its way up to the top off screen at the top test the movie the timeline plays on a loop by default uh, always going back to the beginning um, you can control this with action script of course but for now we're just going to let it loop and the last thing we're going to look at is how to animate objects using flashes built-in 3D animation technology. So let's create a new layer called Eco, and we can use the text tool to type the word Eco on the stage. And we're going to convert this text into a movie clip called Eco as well. And once we've done that, just select your movie clip symbol, and then click on the 3D rotation tool in the toolbar, which will bring up three handles that you can adjust around your symbol which allow you to adjust the X position, the Y position, and the Z position of your symbol in 3D space. So let's just do that and mess around with some of these settings just to see how they work. And you can see the preview gives you what it would look like animating in 3D space. Um, if we create a new layer again and type the word friendly this time, and we're going to turn it into a movie clip symbol called friendly and we're going to angle the word friendly so that it points towards the word eco and vice versa and you can actually animate the objects in 3d space and animate their movement in 3d space although just to say it's not full 3d as as it would be with um, cameras and 3d models using a, a full 3d package it's simulated 3d but uh, you can get some very nice animated effects using these techniques. Okay, let's create a motion tween now on the eco layer and use the 3D tool to animate this by obviously going to frame one and clicking on your start point where you want your animation to begin and then clicking a couple of extra keyframes along the way to animate the word in 3D space and make it float up towards the center of the screen and then up to the top of the screen okay so you can also manip manipulate 3d rotation by using the transform panel if you want to do it accurately by numbers so open the transform panel and you can adjust the 3d elements your x y and z rotation um, there by numbers if you want to reset it so let's create a new layer called Recycle and let's drag the Recycle movie clip onto the stage here. And I just want to show you that you can actually save your 3D animations in the same way that we saved our motion presets in a previous tutorial. So if we uh, add, uh, if we drag our animation, our motion tween into the motion presets panel, uh, we can save it there but also we, there are a number of 3d animation presets in the motion presets panel so for example if we wanted to apply a 3d animation to the recycle symbol here uh, we might use something like the spiral 3d animation which will make it flip around in 3d space let's apply that there just to see how it looks and then let's test the movie to see everything working in conjunction with each other we can see our fish swimming across uh, with their sub animations of the fin and the tail and then we can also see our words animating up in 3d space and the uh, recycle symbol rotating in 3d space as well so these are some very simple techniques to simulate real world motion using flash cs 5.5's animation techniques